This sequence question is a really interesting one because of a special relationship between the two statements. Let me explain what I mean by that. We are told in this sequence that each term is equal to the sum of all of the preceding terms. So just so we make sure we understand that the value of the 10th term, as an example, would be equal to the sum of the first nine terms. So you'd figure out the values of term one, term two, term three, all the way up to the ninth term, add them all up, and that's how you get the value of the 10th term. Now, statement one tells us that the sum of the first three terms is six, but pause there for a moment and ask yourself, given what we know about the sequence, if the sum of the first three terms is six, what can we infer? Maybe pause the video here and, and really take some time to think about that. We know that the value of each term is worth or is equal to the sum of the preceding terms, the sum of all of the preceding terms. So if the sum of the first three terms is six, that means that the fourth term is six because the fourth term would be equal to the sum of all of the preceding terms. But look at statement two. Statement two is telling us exactly the thing that we inferred from statement one. Statement two says that the fourth term is six. Now, if we know that the fourth term is six, we can infer that the sum of the first three terms is six because they told us that that's the rule for this sequence. So that's what's so interesting here, that using the free info from the question stem, we could infer statement two from statement one, and we could infer statement one from statement two. Why is that a big deal? Well, when the statements are inferentially equivalent, meaning we can infer them from one another, we can eliminate answer choices A, B, and C without even looking at what the question is asking. I go into the reasoning behind that in section two of my book, which you can actually get for free on quantreasoning.com. So now that we've eliminated answer choices A, B, C, it's just a question of whether these statements are sufficient on their own or are they not. We know the fourth term is six. We want to know whether the fifth term is 12. Can you answer that question? So some of you will already feel confident that you could answer it if you wanted to, and you can go ahead and pick D and move on. If you're not confident, let's think this through. We know the value of the fourth term is six. We know the sum of the first three terms is also six. We know that the fifth term will be the sum of all of the preceding terms. So you had six from the first three, another six from the fourth one for a total of 12. So the answer to this data sufficiency question is yes. The fifth term is 12, but more importantly for our purposes, the answer is D. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.